Hi and welcome! In this video we are continuing our discussion about solving trigonometric equations, this time working through some adjusted period examples. So these are examples where the period isn't our normal period of 2 pi for sine and cosine or pi for tangent, but instead has been transformed in some way. So referring back to our steps that we usually use to solve trigonometric equations, we're just going to make a couple upgrades to this list in order to help us with these more complicated examples. So instead of writing the problem in the form trig of an angle equals something, we're going to introduce this b value. So it might be like trig of b times r theta equals something. And so this b is what's going to be adjusting the period, and we're just going to account for that being there. Then in our last step where we're adding the period of the function, we're going to need to accommodate for this b value. So if we remember back to learning about transformations, the period is going to be 2 pi over b for sine and cosine, and pi over b for tangent. So depending on which function we're using, we'll either do 2 pi over b or pi over b. But the same steps hold, we just have this little bit of an upgrade. Let's try it out on some examples. So for our first example, let's solve the equation 2 times sine of 4 theta equals square root of 3 for all values of theta. So our first step is to isolate the trig function. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I'm getting sine of 4 theta equals a square root of 3 over 2. Now we're going to need to be careful to handle this 4 theta. And I'm going to put a circle around it to sort of indicate that we just have some input for our function. So it's sine of something equals square root of 3 over 2. So using this sine of something equals square root of 3 over 2, we're going to find the solutions for this something, for the angle that produces square root of 3 over 2. So I can use the unit circle or a reference triangle. The inverse function will give me one of the solutions. So I can say arc sine of square root of 3 over 2 equals something. Square root of 3 over 2 is positive, meaning I'm in quadrant 1, because arc sine has the options of quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, but quadrant 1 is where we go for positive. And I can draw my triangle. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I have square root of 3 is the opposite, and 2 has the hypotenuse. And if we look back to our reference triangles, this is the triangle for pi over 3. We can also see this on the unit circle where sine is the y-coordinate, and we see the square root of 3 over 2 here at pi over 3. So our first solution for this circle is pi over 3, which is really saying that 4 theta is equal to pi over 3. Now we're just going to solve this for theta. So this is what's different about these examples. Normally at this point we would already have our solution, but here we have the 4 times theta. So to solve for theta, we're going to need to divide by 4. When I divide by 4, I have pi over 3 divided by 4. That 4 is like 4 over 1, so when we multiply by the reciprocal, it becomes 1 over 4. And so with pi over 3 times 1 over 4, I'm getting pi over 12. And this is my first solution. Then we repeat this for our second solution. I see here that 2 pi over 3 also gives us a positive sine value of square root of 3 over 2. And so we're going to repeat the process for 2 pi over 3. So if 4 theta equals 2 pi over 3, we divide by 4. That's the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. And so I'm getting 2 pi over 12, which simplifies to pi over 6. So I have my two solutions, pi over 12 and pi over 6, and these are the first solutions I found using the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi. Now we should be able to use these angles and add the period of our function to them, and using that k as an integer to get all of the solutions. So specifically here, we're going to need to add the period of sine of 4 theta. And we need to make sure to use this rather than just doing the period of sine, which would be 2 pi, because this function has a different period. So sine of 4 theta has a period of 2 pi over b, where b is 4. So I have 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. So this pi over 2 is what I'm going to add to my two solutions. 
I'm left with theta equals pi over 12 plus pi over 2k, and theta equals pi over 6 plus pi over 2k, where k is an integer. And these are my solutions. From this, I can write my final statement. The solutions to the equation 2 sine of 4 theta equals square root of 3 are theta equals pi over 12 plus pi over 2k, and theta equals pi over 6 plus pi over 2k, where k is an integer. So before we move to the next example, I just want to graph some things and really confirm that these answers are correct. So just looking at these answers, pi over 12 plus pi over 2k and pi over 6 plus pi over 2k, it can be kind of hard to know that we got it right. So there's one way you can check and I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to graph our left and our right sides of the equation. So I'll graph y equals 2 sine of 4 theta, that was the left side of our equation, and I'll graph the right side of the equation, y equals square root of 3. So when I do this, I'm looking for the places where these two graphs intersect. So this would be where the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And we can confirm that these are the answers we got by testing different values for k. So I'll put both of our solutions here, and let's try some different values for k just to see what happens. So first I'll try k equals 0 in my pi over 12 solution. When I do this, I'm just getting pi over 12. And we can see here that this is one of our intersection points. Similarly, for k equals negative 1, when I do this, I'm doing pi over 12 minus pi over 2, which if I simplify these fractions using pi over 2 is 6 pi over 12, I'm getting negative 5 pi over 12. And it looks like I forgot the negative here, but I'm pointing to the right place, so hopefully you can follow. So the k equals negative 1 gives me the negative 5 pi over 12. Then I'll use the other version of the solution to get the other intersection points. So for the pi over 6 solutions, I'll do k equals 0. That gives me just pi over 6, so that's one of my intersection points. And then for k equals negative 1, I do pi over 6 minus pi over 2. By rewriting that as pi over 6 minus 3 pi over 6, I'm getting negative 2 pi over 6, which is negative pi over 3. And we see that this is our last intersection point. So you could imagine repeating this process for all integers k, and you would get all of the possible solutions, which here are represented by intersections of the graphs. So this is just one way you could kind of check your work if you are working through these examples and you're a little nervous that you're not doing things right. You can graph the left and the right sides of the equation and see where they intersect. Okay, let's move on to another example. Let's solve the equation negative tangent of pi over 3x equals square root of 3 for all values of x. Our first step is to isolate the tangent function. So with this negative tangent, it's sort of like I have negative 1 times tangent, and so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. When I have square root of 3 divided by negative 1, we can just write this as negative square root of 3. So I've simplified everything to be tangent of pi over 3x equals negative square root of 3. And I'm going to do the same thing here where I circle this pi over 3x and sort of consider it as a separate thing and not worry too much about it until I'm trying to solve for x. So we're first going to find the solutions on the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi, and we're starting with tangent of something equals negative square root of 3. We can use the inverse function to get one solution, so arc tangent of negative square root of 3 is what we're looking for. Arc tangent works in either quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, but we'll use quadrant 4 because we have a negative input here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I'm thinking that my opposite side is negative square root of 3, and my adjacent side is 1. And referring back to my reference triangles, this is the pi over 3 triangle. Moreover, because we are in quadrant 4, we would write this as negative pi over 3, or we could use 5 pi over 3. And we can confirm this on our unit circle by doing y over x. All right, so we have our first solution. It's 5 pi over 3. I'll use the positive one, the 5 pi over 3, because I like that better. And for tangent, we only have one solution that we need to work on. So we're going to set up our equation and solve for x. So I have that this circle is 5 pi over 3, but that really is pi over 3x. 
So we have pi over 3x equals 5 pi over 3, and I'm going to solve for x. I'll divide by pi over 3 to isolate the x, so I have 5 pi over 3 divided by pi over 3. I multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm multiplying by 3 over pi, and a lot of stuff cancels here. So the 3's cancel and the pi's cancel, leaving me just with 5. Now I know this is a little weird, x equals 5 is our solution, but yes, that's true. So here, tangent only requires one solution, as I mentioned, so x equals 5 is our answer, and we can reinforce this by looking at the unit circle. We could also choose 2 pi over 3, but it's just pi away, and so we can sort of bounce back and forth between the answers, and so we'll only need one answer here. Now our last step is to add the period of our function to this solution. So we're looking for the period of tangent of pi over 3x, and because the regular period of tangent is pi, we're going to use pi over b here. So pi divided by pi over 3. When we do this, we multiply by the reciprocal, so we take pi times 3 over pi. Our pi's will cancel, and we're left with 3. So we get our solution, which is x equals 5 plus 3k, where k is an integer. And we can write this same statement for our solution. The solutions to negative tangent of pi over 3x equals negative square root of 3 are x equals 5 plus 3k, where k is an integer. So this might be a little hard to trust when you get your answer. It's kind of hard to look at this and go, oh yeah, I feel like that's the right answer. So something we can do is compare to the graph and do a little bit of work. So I'm going to walk you through that. So I'm going to graph negative tangent of pi over 3x using Desmos. That was the left side of the equation I was given. Then I'm going to also graph y equals square root of 3. That was the right side of my equation. And I'm looking for where these two graphs intersect. Every place they intersect are the solutions to the equation. So we're looking for everywhere this is true, this is where the equal sign, the things on both sides of the equal sign are the same, and so that's why we have the left side and the right side graphed here, and we're looking at where they intersect. So let's confirm that our answers get these intersection points. So if I have x equals 5 plus 3k, I can look at some k values. So I can say k equals 0. When I do that, I get x equals 5. I could do k equals 1, which gives me x equals 5 plus 3, which is 8. And then I can do k equals negative 1, which is x equals 5 minus 3, which would be 2. And if we look at our graph here, we see these intersection points. So we see that we have an intersection point at 8, 5, 2, and negative 1. 8, 5, and 2 are the answers we just found, and we can also plug in k equals negative 2 to get this last one. So that would be 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. And we would repeat this process for all values of k. And this shows how we got the answer right and how this represents all of the solutions. Okay, so that is our last stage of these trigonometric equation types of examples. Just remember you follow the same process regardless of what the question looks like. And with this process, you should be able to do any of these questions. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.